One, zero. Ignition, lift off, Center of five, aim high. Welcome back, and we are back with Congressman David Nunes, ranking Republican on the House Intel Committee. Congressman, let's go through some of these text messages from Peter Strzok uh, and uh, what you take away from them. And the first one I want to take a look at is uh, one about Crossfire Hurricane, three days before it was apparently opened, based on Papadopoulos information. He tells Lisa Page, his girlfriend, he wants to discuss opening a counterintelligence investigations relating to Trump's Russian connections. What's the significance? Well, look, I think overall here, these are kind of the text messages that we've all been waiting for, that we knew probably existed, that give the hard evidence that our investigation really needed several years ago. So I've made the statement on your show and many others publicly over the last few years that we know the FBI was lying to Congress uh, because we knew that they did not open this investigation because of Papadopoulos and then they opened it on July 31st. That was always nonsense. There was plenty of evidence of that. And here we have a text message that was clearly relevant to our investigation that they hid from us. And, and look, I would also say it's now clear that Papadopoulos was so mistreated, it's just unbelievable. They're actually, I mean, this, the FBI and DOJ in this country ought to be ashamed of themselves, mocking a target that they knew was a phony target. They're making fun of, of Papadopoulos. This is really, really bad, and somebody needs to, needs to pay a price for it. Well, let me ask you about this Yahoo story, because another thing that they did, which you've reported on this program for years, is they leaked information to the media and then they used those articles as reason to get a wiretap. And here's one of them. Peter Strzok says to Lisa Page, I'm looking at the Yahoo article. I would definitely say at a minimum, Steele's reports should be viewed as intended to influence as well as to inform. That was their whole point, right? Right. And, and look, remember when I put out and the media largely ignored a report that there had been FISA abuse? They knew that we were investigating FISA abuse. Why would this not have been given to Congress? This is just another, another example. We're going to have to do another criminal referral. Uh, you know, look, we knew they had made this up. You know, they had to have known. They had to be working with the DNC and the Clinton campaign. But this is this clearly shows they were witting. It's a hard piece of evidence that we didn't have. And look, I, these are just, there's so many of these, every one of these text messages is explosive. And there's a lot more in these text messages that we're continuing, our investigative team is continuing to comb through. Uh, and I think we're going to find a lot more here in the coming weeks as we begin to piece together old information that we have with new information. Uh, I'm just hopeful that Durham's actually going to do something and we got to ensure that that Durham uh, is not going to be fired by the incoming Biden administration because we know what the Democrats have been willing to do in the past in terms of meddling with elections, like, for example, tarmac meetings uh, in, in Phoenix, for example. Well, that's right. You know, on the tarmac in Phoenix, it was just a few days before Hillary Clinton was to go for an interview in front of the FBI where she was going to be questioned about her use of a private server. And right. three days earlier, Bill Clinton, her husband, meets with a sitting attorney general, Loretta Lynch, on a tarmac in a private right. plane. And they say they talked about their grandkids. I mean, it's just outrageous. And Congressman, I think you just broke news on this program. You said that you're going to do another criminal referral. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, this is clearly lying and obstructing uh, Congress. Um, this is information that we asked for numerous times. I mean, we sat in meetings with Trey Gowdy, who's been on your show uh, numerous times. We sat in meetings with DOJ and FBI, and they sat there and Stone Cold said, oh, there's no more information. There's no more text messages. These were the text messages that we really needed to run a proper investigation. Instead, we had to go around. We had to rely on informants. We had to get piece all this together uh, in order to get this out to the American people that, hey, Trump campaign and Republicans were, were not only spied on, but this was wrong. And I think in the big picture, as the smoke begins to clear, what you're really going to see, the Russia hoax was mostly about covering up Hillary Clinton's emails that were clearly classified and that were spread out all over the world. Likely all of our adversaries had them. And I think they've, they, they developed this hoax to hide it from the American people in the 16 campaign. Just the impossible happened, and that is that Donald Trump won. And then luckily, we were able to uncover this and expose it. Uh, I just hope that people pay the price for it. 
That's unbelievable. So you do expect John Durham to come out with a report and continue this investigation? Well, look, I don't see how John Durham can't bust several people for lying and misleading Congress. At a minimum, okay. there ought to be several indictments on that. In terms of the larger picture, conspiracy, uh, that some of the referrals we've made, those are it's harder to prove. Uh, but I do believe that they ought to pay a price and they ought to be put in jail. Look, if not, who's going to trust the Department of Justice and the FBI? I mean, I, I don't think too many yeah. Republicans are. The, the 70 plus million people that voted for Donald Trump, yeah. I think they're going to take a meeting with the FBI after we know how they just frame Papadopoulos in these, in these text messages yeah. that we see today. And framed Michael Flynn, don't forget about that. Real quick before you go, Congressman, is there anything you can tell us about the Russia hack? Because this is another instance where I know it's an ongoing investigation. Do we know how many agencies they breached? No, look, at, at this point, we just had an initial, uh, initial briefing, initial information. Uh, but I think it's just more evidence that the cyber capabilities of our adversaries continue to grow, whether it's Russia, it's China, Iran, North Korea. Okay. Uh, these, these, these capabilities grow, and, and we are very vulnerable as a government and as a nation um, yep. you know, to, to hacking. And, and our audience knew the threat of China way early because of you, Congressman. You came on this program four years ago with your investigation into the Chinese Communist Party as they were moving their military bases across the world. Thank you for that, educating our audience so long ago on this threat. Congressman Devin Nunes, good to see you, sir. We'll Thank see you, you soon. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically, opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. We decided long ago that the dangers of excessive and unwarranted concealment of pertinent facts far outweighed the dangers which are cited to justify it.